Hello and welcome to One Minute Theatre Reviews. I'm Paul Seven Lewis and in this episode I'll be reviewing Brief Encounter at the Watermill Theatre. If you're expecting to see a straightforward stage adaptation of the film Brief Encounter, you may be disappointed. If you're expecting to see Emma Rice's legendary multimedia production of Brief Encounter, you may be disappointed. However, if you go without ever having seen Brief Encounter, or at least without any expectations, you should enjoy an evening of humour, passion, poignancy and great theatricality. Let's take the lack of similarity to the film first. Part of the issue here is that in writing this play, Emma Rice has combined elements of Noel Coward's screenplay with his original short play, Still Life, on which the film was based. This is a splendid idea, but it means it isn't pure brief encounter. And as to Emma Rice's adaptation, well, the original knee-high production from 10 or so years ago included a big screen with a movie showing that imitated the David Lean version but featured the stage actors, but then interacted with it. Well, in this production, the screen has gone. Nevertheless, after a bitty first act, the play settles down and tells a romantic story that touches the heart. Well, that's the one-minute review, but keep watching for more about Brief Encounter at the Watermill Theatre. The story of a chance meeting of two married people in a railway station buffet and their subsequent hesitant, guilt-ridden affair is still centre stage in this production of Brief Encounter, but there's much more about the relationship between Myrtle, the cafe manager, and Albert, the station guard, than you see in the film. And this is especially true in the first act, where their flirtatious and at times vulgar chatting up is given almost equal weight with the more reserved and cautious romance between Alec and Laura. There's a strong, and I suggest elitist, suggestion that middle class equals repressed but serious, while working class equals liberated and comic. Indeed, Kate Milner Evans and Charles Anjama are very funny as Myrtle and Stanley, and the former is a particularly strong singer. As well as those two couples, there's a third romance going on between a more innocent younger couple, Beryl the waitress, and Stanley, who sells food from a tray on the platform. Nicely judged performances by Hannah Kogali and Oliver Aston. Although the compare and contrast is very interesting, it did make the first act very bitty. It was quite a challenge to get to know Alec and Laura. Although the screen has disappeared, much of Emma Rice's inventive adaptation remains in this production directed by Robert Kirby. Songs and dance are used to dazzling effect, with all seven actors singing and several playing instruments as well. Uh, the songs are by Noel Coward, uh, sometimes his music and lyrics, sometimes just his lyrics with music by Eamon uh, O'Dwyer. And they're well chosen to reflect the mood of each moment. For example, Beryl sings an appropriate Mad About the Boy. And at the end, to match the poignancy of the parting, Alex sings A Room with a View, with lines like A room with a view and you, and no one to worry us, no one to hurry us, through this dream we found. And it's beautifully sung by Callum McIntyre. There's also Mime and Dance. In fact, it's pure theatre, by which I mean it couldn't be done in any other medium. And it's what we love about being at a live performance. The watermill stage is small, so Harry Pitsy's set design leaves it open and cleverly uses a few pieces of scenery to convey the locations. The cafe counter doubles as a piano. Armchairs and tables roll smoothly on and off as the scene changes from a cafe to a flat to Laura's home. Uh, where we meet her husband Fred, also played by Charles Anjama, and you can see why she might want someone less solid and a lot more exciting. There may be no big screen, but the production does use a nice and very funny device to remind us of its cinematic connection, namely sound effects. Uh, as Merrill mimes pouring tea, one of the cast in the corner pours water into a jug in front of a microphone. The second act is much more focused on Laura and Alec, and the better for it. 
It's a classic love story and well told in this version. Their blossoming romance, their growing love that becomes increasingly reckless, and the agonising over the rights and wrongs of their affair, the ecstasy and the agony. As Laura says at one point, their love has made her a stranger in her own home. The most interesting, because the most conflicted character, is Laura. Played by Laura Lake Abadizi, it's the more difficult role because she has to express herself from behind a mask of repressed feelings and the kind of strangulated accent that you'll be familiar with from films of the 1930s and 40s and The Queen in the Crown. Well, she does a splendid job and by the end, I was totally in tune with her anguish. Callum McIntyre is excellent as Alec Harvey, combining charm, confidence, humour and profound feeling. This may not be what you would expect if you love the film, but if you accept that it's been taken apart and reconstructed as a piece of theatre, I think you'll have a great evening. I give Brief Encounter at the Watermill four stars.